Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. International lecture series one topic six. So so far we have conducted uh, the series. Uh, the first series was on the topic is nanomaterials for agriculture and and presented by Dr. R.S. Kusalai, as in browser is nanotechnology. And the second topic was uh, deep learning fundamentals and applications. It was conducted by Dr. R.S. Associate Professor and Head Department of Electronics and Information Engineering. And it was conducted on 26 March. And the third one was 2D models unlocking the power of material for sustainable. And it was presented by Dr. Vibindu, Professor and Head Department of Physics, Dean and Faculty of Science and Humanities. And direct student of health, and it was conducted on second day. And the fourth topic was taught by uh, Dr. NCK Park Election Professor, uh, Department of Allied Health Sciences, and it was conducted on 16 day. The topic heading was novel approach to antibiotics, and the fifth topic was. We were in the brain discovering the potential of neuroplasticity by Lisa Daniel from Assistant Professor, Department of Biomedical Engineering, and it was conducted on 23 April. And today we are having the final topic, topic six: biomedical applications of nanomaterials and their Future solution solutions for current challenges. And our presenter is Dr. Pratita PK, Deputy Control of Examinations, and Professor and Head of Department of Nanotechnology, Nodal Staff Center for Higher Education. And it's a great opportunity to have the President of Gondola University, Dr. Viripa Yatika, for this uh, final session. And we welcome Dr. Dripa to say a few words and uh, finalize this uh, international uh, lecture series one. Over to Dr. Dripa. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, uh, as you remember, uh, we signed MOU, and then uh, our MOU is really changed into actionable items. So uh, I'll try to take this opportunity, and I'd like to thank uh dr Tacy thomas uh vice chancellor of uh, nur islam college of higher education uh, dr lalu uh, international affairs dean and also uh, faculty members teachers uh, professors who gave series of webinars so i would like to thank uh, mr jagan from uh, gambela university to coordinate uh, this uh, series of webinars then in the future i hope uh, we are going to conduct more webinars and also international events if we work together. So I'm very much uh, pleased really to, to work with Nur Islam College of Higher Education. And then this will help us to realize our internationalization efforts. So we are starting, we are establishing collaboration and coordination with uh, advanced universities like uh, Nur Islam College of Higher Education. And then this kinds of uh, experience will really help for the uh, better kind of academic environment in the future. So I would like to say thank you so much for your contribution, for your generosity in uh, providing this kind of experience to our teaching staff and to our students. Then I am just I would like to invite uh, the uh, vice chancellor uh, to Gambela University and to Ethiopia. Uh, maybe if you have any convenient time, we are very willing to host you uh, in person. And so I'm really thankful for your leadership. Thank you so much. This is what I'd like to say.
Thank you, Dr. Tripa. Thank you for your wonderful remarks. And uh, without much ado, we invite uh, Dr. Prasida to present the over to you, Madam. Uh, very good afternoon to all, especially Dr. Diriba, a teacher from uh, Gambala University, Ethiopia, and our uh, Dr. Lalu Gladson, sir, from Nurul Islam, Center for Higher Education, and all the other organizers. I'm really happy to be here uh, to meet all of you for this uh, international lecture series. And uh, let me um, share a few ideas of what uh, the exact research is going on at uh, Nurul Islam at the Department of Nanotechnology. And we would be happy to have a collaboration with uh, your university, both in terms of uh, uh, guiding the students and some sort of research uh, collaborations as well. So let me um, just uh, go on to my presentations. Uh, sorry, Dr. Lalu, may I be excused? I have one urgent meeting now. Yes, sir. May I be excused because I have very urgent meeting now. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Thank you for your... Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Lal. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, uh, is this slideshow visible, sir? Hello? So can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes, madam. Proceed now. Okay. 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 So very good afternoon to all and um, this is Prasita here. So myself is the professor and head of the Department of Nanotechnology. So to begin with, I would like to share a few things about what exactly is our research at uh, nanotechnology. So I'll be introducing a few basic things about nanotechnology and how exactly we are going about our research, especially for biomedical applications. So and how they can be used for day-to-day uh, -day challenges and uh, uh, existing uh, challenges like epidemics, pandemics, and so on. So, so let's uh, uh, slowly move on. So to begin with, I would like to introduce you like um, the Nobel Prize for the year 2023 were won by these three people. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was for the their uh, synthesis and production of uh, nanomaterial called carbon quantum dots. So it's like, I'm happy to share with you that uh, we have been working on carbon quantum dots. That is exactly on this uh, for from the um, 2017, from the year 2017, we have been working on this. And uh, we had actually did this with a collaboration with uh, Baba Atomic Research Center, Mumbai. So we had a scientist that Harish Pal and uh, um, we had synthesized the nanomaterials that is this particular carbon quantum dots in our own laboratory here that, uh, that is actually a photophysics laboratory over there. So we could produce a very good uh, publication out of it uh, with uh, 9.5 impact and uh, that was a start uh, that was uh, like how it began like this carbon quantum dots. So it is like As I'll tell you, uh, I'm basically a biologist, like I'm working with uh, how exactly nanomaterials are reacting with uh, human bodies or human tissues or how exactly the biomaterials. So it is like, uh, um, so when we are concerned about the human body or when we are concerned about the biomedical applications, the major concern, what you have is about the uh, toxicity. Like nanomaterials, as you know, they are, uh, we are always uh, trying to look how exactly they are non-toxic and how exactly the word what we use is biocompatibility. That is, it should go well
um, uh, be able to satisfy the uh, function what it is intended to. So that is how we are looking for. So when you are talking about quantum dots, initially quantum dots were like, you know, they are made up of semiconductor materials like uh, zinc selenide, cadmium selenide. Uh, so, uh, you know, When you hear this name, you would know, like cadmium selenide and all, how toxic they are. So as a biologist, or as a biomedical scientist, we will not be able to go with such applications. That is, we will not work with such toxic materials. That is toxic as well as biocompatible, but equal like those of those semiconductor uh, quantum dots. And I really, why I'm looking for quantum dots and why it has fetched a Nobel uh, wonder uh, particles in nature, they perform uh, not as bulk, because bulk, you know, not those or above, we call them as bulk. Yeah, so many issues like uh, internet. Okay. So, um, hi everyone. So, I think we will continue from where we had left uh, back. Like, popular uh, in 2015 but the problem was that like uh, uh, we could uh, use it for human applications because of its uh, talks <laughs> nature and all that. That's why we were hunting for materials or carbon quantum dots those were less toxic biocompatible so that it could be for biomedical implants as so what you see on the screen now it's taking again and again <clears throat> Okay, search. Okay, I think I will go again. That's one of the okay, okay. So it's like when we talk about the general applications of nanomaterials or any con carbon quantum dots, whether it is toxic or non toxic, uh, it is like you know why we are concerned more about that is that. Uh, uh, we are looking for uh, non-toxic materials because, as you know, the environment has been highly dumped with uh, polluting agents. And when we talk about more of uh, nanomaterials, which are again toxic, and we are introducing such materials to the nature or to the environment or to the human tissue, that is going to be uh, creating another menace. That is why we are looking for uh, non-toxic, uh, compatible, and so on. So when you talk about materials, and especially the carbon quantum dots, which is the current area we are discussing about, it's like you know they have so many applications, and they can be used as electrodes. They can be used as a substrate materials, active materials, and so on. 
But as I told you earlier, as I am a biologist and as I am looking for biomedical applications, it is like I'm more interested uh, to talk about how exactly they can be used for bio implants or for diagnostics or theranostics applications. OK, so it is like, you know, the, uh, on the slides, like you'll be able to see how exactly are the different applications, different kinds of materials which are being used uh, uh, widely and so on. So it is like uh, to talk about the potential applications of uh, carbon quantum dots. It's like uh, uh, they can be used for imaging. As I told you, we started with imaging applications, how they can be applied for uh, diagnosing uh, disease. Yes, madam. I am getting a bit uh, <laughs> too much. OK, let it be said. So uh, as I told you, it is like, you know, uh, it is better to rely upon the green available sources than chemicals, as we know, because uh, that will again uh, create less toxicity. So it is like, you know, even it is carbon quantum dot, they can be synthesized from chemicals as well. So better than relying upon chemical roots, we can go for uh, green methods so that that is like the sources could be green so that they will have lots of advantages as you see on the screen like uh, cost effective benign stable all such things whatever is uh, available on the screen is uh, there so once you are ready with the synthesis hope you would see on the extreme top left like these are the 10 images of uh, uh, evenly distributed carbon quantum dots what you're seeing is a on the top uh, uh, left corner okay so it is like um, ah yeah so this is uh, evenly distributed or dispersed uh, carbon quantum dots in a uh, 10 image so uh, once you have synthesized uh, from urea or whatever means you have it is like you know you can go for uh, um, uh, the characterization methods that is you know in our uh, uh, any any nanomaterial when you are going for preparation it is like it has to uh, travel through three different phases that is like first you find out the source synthesize the green uh, or synthesize the basic material what you are uh, uh, intended to and once you have synthesized you are not still sure whether they are really of a, a, a nano size and all that and your morphology their characteristics what you're looking for should be there right so what you go is to characterize them that is the second level that is the characterization step as well for that you can go for particle size characterization ftir spectroscopy uv spectroscopy uh, photoluminescence effects then uh, near infrared uh, red uh, spectroscopy then naturally you have sem and tem methods so once you are defined with all such methods only you can go for any sort of application either it is biomedical energy whatever it is you can go for it okay so these are some of the characterization that is commonly available uh, characterization methods available that is uh, displayed on the screen now so when you are having a bio compatible as i told you earlier less toxic and they should well adapt with the human tissues as well that is what you mean by bio compatible right? Right. So it is like when they are highly biocompatible, you are also looking for their surface proper. What do you mean by biocompatible is that they should be easily serving their purpose. What is the purpose? Either they are intended for some diagnostic or, or therapeutic purposes. That is, it should penetrate. That is, it should be well compatible with the surface of the cell membrane, isn't it? Only then these nanomaterials can penetrate the cell membrane and enter into tissues and they can serve their target, right? So it is like these biocompatibility should be enabled by the properties you are seeing around. That is, they should have proper surface properties. The shape is very important. Their hydrophobicity, that is the penetration, you know, the cell membranes are made up of hydrophobic materials like it's like phospholipids that is why you know the nanomaterial only if they are enoughly hydrophilic as well as in a hydrophobic way they'll be able to penetrate the membrane as well that is why then the size is also very much important for penetrating the cell membrane or nuclear membrane as well then the charges are also important as you know for example, the DNA is negatively charged, the surface or the cell surface is positively charged. So your nanomaterial should be designed in such a way that they satisfy all such properties. Okay. So there are many nanomaterials which are already being used for biomedical applications. And, uh, you know, the DNA, uh, the biomolecules, all of them exactly fit to the size of uh, the nanomaterials. Okay. So nanomaterials always match with these biological macromolecules and micromolecules. That is why 
why you know it is very much uh, um, applicable that is why you are very much want of nano materials that are bio compatible for human applications okay so uh, let me display you few of the applications that is with uh, carbon quantum dots what you see what you are seeing that is like it is represented on the right like see it is like aggressive cancer cells and mild cancer cells you remember i showed you uh, carbon quantum dots uh, that is the same material with different sizes are being displayed with different colorations and all and i told you they can bind specifically with molecular target that is specific proteins as well so see now you can find how the aggressive cancer cells lines look like and the mild cancer cells look like isn't it so you'll be able to make out uh, the difference between the normal cells or the healthy cells and the disease cells as well so some of the images you can go with to see how exactly the carbon quantum dots and now you could have slowly understood why carbon quantum dots are that very important and we are fortunate enough to work with those carbon quantum dots and uh, they have fits the nobel prize for 2023 okay so uh, there are other uh, let's let me list out many other applications of uh, uh, you know many of the nano materials but as i am speaking about the carbon quantum dots right so it is like bio and nano photonics it's a newly emerging area like uh, nano photonic imaging you know photonics is an area which deals with again with the uh, you know live cell imaging Uh, with uh, very targeted uh, um, laser spectroscopy, such things uh, you are. That is when you are working with light at precise levels. You call it photonics, right? So it is like you know you can see below the scintigraphy and NAR images of nude mice which are being diseased. Okay, so you'll be able to exactly or precisely diagnose the uh, areas where the disease has been occurred. And there is another added advantage of these nano materials is that, uh, or the carbon condoms is that. now these dots can be labeled with um, therapeutic materials okay see on the left uh, uh, you you can see a small image hope you understand there is a core material and a shell material and they can also be lined lined up or loaded with uh, uh, antibodies what is represented here or any other bio molecule which has a therapeutic or drug related property so that what is done is that Uh, besides being a diagnostic tool it can also serve as a therapeutic tool that is why i told you in the beginning carbon quantum dots can serve as both theranostics that is diagnostic as well as therapeutic in nature okay so it is like you know this is another field of uh, you know uh, why i am putting many such unrelated topics together is that you know uh, carbon quantum dots are any nano materials you know uh, like uh, many of them have a negative idea about nano medicine okay because you know nano medicine is a newly newly emerging field and we have very little people to work on it and there is vast scope open to work on it only problem is the uh, challenge uh, faced by the nano medicine is the toxicity or bio compatibility so once you break up these challenges you know there are many areas opened up in biology or in medicine so that researchers are welcome to take up such opportunities that is why i am introducing many arenas in biomedical engineering where these nano medical or quantum uh, carbon quantum dots can be applied to uh, bring out a large number of breakthrough sciences okay so it is like another area where you can apply these nano materials and there are lots of challenges awaiting is this synthetic biology as you know uh, god has made uh, humans like very perfect way and each and every cell when you look into has a very highly complicated form what you are seeing below is a surface membrane or a plasma membrane what you call isn't it it is a lipid bilayer membrane loaded with so many proteins and uh, uh, transmembrane proteins and all that things so you know the challenge here is to uh, make a live a uh, cell a single cell okay so it is not easy that a human can recreate a cell as such so it is like you know the first synthetic cell was uh, recreated in 2010 you will find it and never you can make a perfectly stable or a perfectly uh, you know uh, the synthetic cell uh, like what you find in nature so that challenge it remains and carbon quantum dots or any nano material can be used for such uh, preparatory methods that is like you know there are uh, uh, many research labs opened up to take up this research and there are many behind this research too so if you have a proper bio compatible material that is as you know you know materials they uh, any 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 biological 
a cell or system or tissue, whatever it may be, you know, they are composed of materials ultimately. So if you can precisely work out and arrange these uh, nanomaterials, because you know, many of the nanomaterials have a property of self-alignment okay they can uh, align themselves into perfect structures they have that property so if you are able to work out this particular property then you can make such uh, perfect materials but anyhow that remains still a challenge in biomedical engineering so that you make around a, a synthetic cell possibly functional okay so when you are talking about advanced biology you know they are uh, normally used as biosensors in stem cell therapy so, so many arenas are at open for researchers to take ahead the uh, research uh, further into such uh, biological fields with a child so another important area is what you call as a neurodegeneration that is you know you know alzheimer's parkinson parkinson so all such diseases you are hearing daily and you know uh, nanomaterials and especially carbon quantum dots have ultimately many solutions offered to tackle these problems as well that is you know uh, for example uh, um, uh, carbon quantum dots can be you know the next slide you'll be seeing like how exactly they can be you know there are few studies which have been taken up but uh, not much have been uh, succe uh, succeeded you know in this uh, proceeding into, uh, into this particular study that is you know you'll find that uh, carbon quantum dots have been linked to chitosan films or hydrogels so that in the presence of photons or in the presence of light either in uv or normal light they will be uh, stimulated so that they will be uh, um, uh, what triggering the neuronal cells so that they'll be able to stimulate so as you know in uh, neurodegenerative diseases there will be no further growth or further development or there will be um, uh, malfunctional neuronal cells so nanoparticles have been found applications in stimulating or triggering such cell applications. So all these are open areas for anybody, either a student or faculty, to take a research in this area so that you will be able to create uh, new breakthroughs in that. That is why, you know, uh, OK. Now, this is another area opened up that is a carbon quantum dots uh, we are applying in wound healing. So to talk about, uh, we received a project uh, in 2019 at the Department of Nanotechnology, uh, which was specifically meant for carbon quantum dots in the area of wound healing. So luckily, we could produce a few good publications and a uh, uh, few patents from this particular topic. And it is like, you know, uh, we could engineer these carbon quantum dots. We could uh, uh, um, combine it many with many organic molecules and biomolecules so that we could make it functional and apply for wound healing materials. So we were uh, going for organic materials and uh, uh, other uh, uh, functional uh, ayurvedic materials also so they could be used for drug delivery tissue adhesives they can use then they can be used as hemostats they can be used as infection control growth factor delivery as well so these are some of the uh, applications which are conventionally already available for skin repair that is uh, you know these are the areas you'll find that nanocrystals are being applied for uh, skin repair that is like, you know, either they are single layered crystals, metallic crystals, colloidals, then uh, cellulose materials and all that. So, uh, you know, and as you know, you know, silver nanocrystals are being popularly used and it's a most popular nanomaterial, I would tell you. Okay, there are, but there are toxicity concerns on that. That is why we are looking for alternate, as I told you earlier. So they are all, all these things are having because when you talk about skin repair, it is not a single process, okay? When you're talking about skin repair, if there is a damage, you have to work with the inflammation system, you have to work with the uh, repair system, then you have to control the microbes around there, that is a secondary infection control. So it is, and then uh, diabetes has another important role to play, that is, you should also uh, limit the diabetic factors. So the and growth factors are important than the blood supply that is what we call angiogenesis okay so such things are also to be maintained when you talk about skin repair so you need a nanomaterial that looks for overall characteristics in a skin repair that is a wound is healed when all these factors come together so these factors together are, are on a wholesome way all these materials or all, all these factors should be controlled in order to make a an effective skin repair mechanism okay so these are the already available nano dressings which are available for skin regeneration 
so this is a conventional kind of things uh, which are being uh, used already so as you know you know we are we are able to use animal herbal and synthetic based origin of nano materials so uh, based upon their uh, uh, repair mechanisms they we can be using it as medicated that is when you use a nano material you can link it or bio conjugate it with another organic materials or drug elements to make the healing faster so all such things are possible when you talk about skin regeneration so this is again a kind of a, a mechanism you find how exactly a skin repair mechanism works about so you know uh, uh, it is again a carbon see what you see here is a, a carbon quantum dot which is bioactive in nature and there is a compound called spermidin i told you it can be linked with drug molecules right so and uh, you should have an effective uh, nano material system or carbon quantum dots that can penetrate the skin and it should also be bio compatible so that it doesn't harm the human tissue as well. so what you see here is a rabbit eye and it is being used for eye infections so you should imagine once you are using any nano material for eye infections how safe it could be okay so it is like it could be ultimately bio compatible for it should be uh applied for a nai infection okay so it is like you know uh, so bacterial keratitis has been cured so uh, and another important factor what uh, that is maybe like it will be following in the slide okay so this has a very relevant information that i have to share with you that is like uh, you know you could have heard about antimicrobial resistance which is growing day to day isn't it so it is like you know um, highly resistant strains are emerging daily so that it is very hard for clinicians to cure such infections either with single antibiotics and now it has come to multiple antibiotics and still it's very tough to cure so even with multiple antibiotics the resistance is growing day by day so what are the mechanisms to tackle such uh, resistance is a very hot topic today and we are also that is as a nanotechnologist or as a biomedical uh, person i am also looking into the area where uh, you can apply the nano materials to tackle this amr okay so this antimicrobial resistance can be, cannot be tackled with another antibiotic it has to be tackled only with a, a solution that is alternate materials as well. so carbon quantum dots again can be an effective solution for this antimicrobial resistance and then uh, naturally synthesized one and if they are bio compatible enough they have to be safe upon human cells and so on and they has to play their key role in killing the microbes as well so if they are able to cure the microbial infections naturally they will be also uh, uh, they they can cure the infections or skin repair also okay so this is another area to be explored and researchers are welcome to this area where there is very limited opportunity or a limited uh, uh, people working over there and many researchers many funding opportunities are looked for for in this particular area so this is just a comparison of silver nanoparticles and carbon quantum dots in uh, terms of this uh, therapeutic efficacy so just an article telling you like how exactly you know uh, silver nanoparticles and uh, carbon quantum dots act as well but in a way they are uh, uh, less toxic in nature and they are faster in their um, uh, therapeutic functions now a basic question arises like uh, bio accumulation so what exactly this bio accumulation is uh, that we should go a uh, little deeper into that that is uh, you have uh, uh, the mechanisms like um, how exactly a pharmaceutical material is functioning in a human body right so it should be uh, uh, absorbed into a human system properly it should be assimilated and excreted properly so that there is no accumulation inside a human body only then you call a pharmaceutical agent or a drug to be a perfect drug so in this case uh, we also should be concerned about how exactly carbon quantum dots or any nano material stays in the body or it doesn't interact with the bioaccumulation or toxicity concerns so in terms of bioaccumulation uh, there the, there is a study done and uh, you will find that they are not much accumulating and they are able to uh, cross the barriers that is as you know only 10 nanometer or less than 10 nanometer sized uh, um, carbon quantum dots will be able to penetrate the cell membranes and uh, as per our studies 
carbon quantum dots are even penetrable into the nuclear core. What you see here is uh, uh, in blue. Now, what you see the green things are the cells or the cytoplasm. And what you see in dark blue is a nuclear thing. So when we are trying with uh, CQD materials, they are able to penetrate deep into the tissues and they are even uh, uh, able to light up. That is, as I told you earlier, they are not easily quenchable or they are not easily bleaching, right? So they are able to light up the uh, nuclear membrane and the nuclear complexes. Okay, so that barrier crossing function has been also very effective in terms of carbon quantum dots. So these are some of the publications we could make. As I told you earlier, uh, you know, we are looking for that is in 2015 as well. We were looking for biocompatible uh, quantum dots. That is why we came around to uh, see the carbon quantum dots, right? So in this case, like uh, 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 we were looking like uh, uh, how exactly we can produce carbon quantum dots from natural materials. And in this case, we could find a solution that is from Indian lemon. That is, you know, the basic, as I told you, from urea, we can synthesize carbon quantum dots or from uh, even citric acid, this uh, another chemical from which you will be able to produce very effective quantum dots. Now, what we did is that if the citric acid, you know, lemon is a very good source of citric acid and we could effectively synthesize um, uh, carbon quantum dots from Indian lemon. So this Indian lemon uh, had, was a very good source and from that we could synthesize uh, these uh, carbon quantum dots and that was sent to bark and then uh, we could make a very uh, nice publication 2017 that's what i told you so uh, again uh, the department of nanotechnology is open up or it is open for uh, collaborations as well and these are some of the publications we could uh, do again with these uh, um, uh, quantum dots as well. so this is a live image what we could secure from that uh, i told you earlier we had uh, synthesize carbon quantum dots for the purpose of bioimaging. That is like, see, we could synthesize uh, perfectly spherical nanoparticles, as you see in the left. So the size of these particles were even around two nanometers in size. And that was really a breakthrough what we could get because uh, less than five nanometers and the even distribution, that is more important. In nanomaterials, we always get agglomerated or accumulated nanomaterials, but we could get highly dispersed nanomaterials or this quantum dot and they had that too in two to three nanometer sizes and see this is a cell uh, layers what you are seeing here the cytoplasm and this is a nucleus that is a blue thing what you see around and our material that is a carbon quantum dots with blue fluorescence could penetrate the uh, nucleus and the chromatin was stained effectively that was the uh, finding what we could get from this and this has been patented as well so uh, another important property of the superhydrophobic nanomaterials, as I told you earlier, there is another arena open. That is, there is a challenging field. Because once when I visited um, Sri Chitra uh, Medical Center, and uh, you know we were discussing with those scientists about uh, many applications, what we can, you know, there are many advantages of carbon quantum dots and all that. And uh, the scientist over there, uh, I think it's Dr. Francis, and he was just asking me only one question. Okay, ma'am, there are lots of applications, but I have one challenge for you. Can you make me a coating that? Um, uh, has no biofilm on that. We are talking so much about anti-biofilming and all that. But I tell you that is a real challenge still existing in the field of biomedicine that if you can coat your urinary catheters with a um, nanomaterial or any material, whatever it is, so that it never allows any bacteria to stay on that is anti-biofilm coatings if that can be solved you know that that only thing is what we are looking for and you know when i found internationally many scientists or many of the labs or researchers are behind this particular challenge that whether they can solve the issue of uh, anti-biofilm that is there shouldn't be any film formed that of the of the microbes formed on a catheter surface for example urinary catheters when you inserted for patients uh, in the hospital setup. What happens is they stay for hardly three to five days. And after that, you find there is an infection. So there is no solution for this. And this anti-biofilm coating, uh, OK, I'm not telling we have a 100% solution. But there are open opportunities that you can explore and you can find out that there are 
hundred and one solution with nanomaterials with this. Okay, so we could develop super hydrophobic uh, films, and uh, uh, when we could analyze, so you will probably find this the characterization methodology, and uh, we could find that these biofilm coatings are anti-diabetic in nature. They have the anti-biofilming property. They are capable of angiogenesis. Hope you understand what is angiogenesis is that it should be able to generate new vascular tissue. That is, in an area where there is a wound repair or whatever it is, you know, there should be a proper blood supply. Only when there is a blood supply, you will find that uh, the curing is faster. So we could also find a solution for this angiogenesis and they could also have a property of antimicrobial in nature so when you talk about antimicrobial property as i told you earlier they will solve many of the issues like antimicrobial resistance and they can cure the infections faster so wound healing materials so these are some of our results what we were about we had obtained in our laboratory like uh, they we could find or we could uh, synthesize very stable nanomaterials so before we had gone for this uh, wound healing studies, we are also confirmed about the antimicrobial photocatalytic application, antioxidant assays and all that. So these are some of our results what uh, we had published uh, recently is that uh, the same studies. Uh, I wanted to tell you one for one more information. When you talk about biology, like uh, the major challenge, one more challenge, I told you about how nanomaterials have to be biocompatible. Okay, that is there. Now I'll talk about the another challenge is that how will you test exactly a uh, nanomaterial which suits the humans? I told you it should be non-toxic, biocompatible. How do you test that? How do you know whether a material is biocompatible and all that? So directly, if you have a material, you can never use it for any um, application directly because there are lots of ethical concerns over that. So to tackle all these ethical concerns, that is, we as a technical university, we don't have permission for using any animal studies. That is, you know, when you are going for uh, human tissues, we should go for smaller animals first. So when you are going for smaller animals uh, in our university or in any university like us, we don't have an animal facility or ethical concerns. So the problem is that we can go for very smaller animals like zebra fishes, uh, then larval forms, chironomus larvae, such that, or drosophila, and such things we needn't worry about the um, ethical concerns. So in that case, is when you are having a nanomaterial, what we initially do is that we go with um, microbial studies. So as I told you, when you are using a microbe, there are two advantages. One is that we can use a microbe and see whether the nanomaterial is harming the microbe. So if the nanomaterial is destroying a microbe, again, the outputs are two. First one is that it can kill a microbe. It implies it can be an alternate antibiotic so that it kills a microbe. Another implication is it is harmful for a life cycle. Then you have to prove if it is killing a microbe, it shouldn't kill any human cell. So that is what you call you know, uh, the cytotoxicity studies. So once you are done with all such cellular studies, now we can try with such small animals. So these studies can be done in our own lab. So what you see below is that uh, the cells, how they are proliferating in a uh, system that is in a growth condition, that is what you call as in vitro. In vitro means in lab. So what you see above is what you call in vivo, means inside a body, in a living cell. So first you can do for in vitro, that is you are testing with animal cell lines or any some cell cultures, you know, just a petri plate or in an animal, uh, sorry, in a uh, well uh, decontaminated lab, you can do that. And then uh, when you go for small animals with drosophila and all that, you will be able to find out, you can use your nanomaterial and find out sorry, how exactly they are working. See, this is an image where you see that how the healing process is on with your nanometer. Okay, so these are some of the results we could obtain with these uh, carbon quantum drops. So uh, they can also be used as adjuvants. Uh, as we know, there is another project coming over to the Department of Nanotechnology. So it is like, you know, they are working like um, how a nanomaterial can be used as adjuvant. This term, uh, I'm not sure how many like uh, non-biologists will not be familiar with this term. That is like adjuvants means if you are taking in a vaccine during COVID, you know, whatever it is you could have taken and you could have read more about these vaccines. And all. So to make a vaccine more powerful or to make it more effective, you add these adjuvants. Okay, so that when the adjuvants are um, 
uh, added to it, uh, they make it uh, more uh, immunosensitive in nature so that the immune system get activated and so that your body is functioning better to that particular vaccine okay or uh, it is functioning against that uh, microbe or a pathogen so that is what you call an adjuvant so this is a novel study that you are utilizing a nano material um, for this adjuvant purpose and there is no uh, research uh, uh, commonly found in this case of adjuvants okay so this is a study what we are uh, currently uh, uh, going to take up uh, very soon on adjuvants that is like you know uh, how exactly there are you know conventionally available there are many such uh, nano materials which are used as adjuvants so why not the challenge was that or the project proposal was on that means like how exactly the nano materials can be used as adjuvants so that you can curate anti venoms that is like you know the snake venom which is a menace uh, for centuries as well there are many people working behind that but if you can develop a proper adjuvant or if you can develop an anti venomous agent against this uh, snake venom that would be another breakthrough so that is where our research now newly has stepped onto and all that so this is uh, the uh, overall methodology and how exactly we are looking uh, towards that and all that is depicted in this particular slide so this is how uh, so where we are located so in our university the department and all that is visible in this particular slide so this is our team and uh, we also do offer consultancy facilities so uh, we the major instruments uh, which are working for consultancy are being listed over here so it is like any student or faculty whoever is willing to collaborate or to uh, produce any uh, productive like uh, collaborative uh, publications patents or uh, project fundings anyone on through is uh, always welcome and our lab is open throughout so all such facilities you can also be using it uh, based on a very small payment and you can avail the facilities from us and our all of our faculty members are ready to help you out over here so these are our faculty members uh, who are working on different uh, uh, topics of uh, uh, recent advancements and all of you all of them are uh, happily uh, involved to work with you on any aspect of their own study and we already have a few collaborations with uh, uh, national scientists in india and few others of international repute in uk finland ireland and us thank you and i think i'm open for questions Questions are welcome, and uh, I would be happy to answer if there are any questions as well. Okay. Hello, is it audible, ma'am? Yeah, audible, very much audible, sir. Please go ahead. Okay, good afternoon and uh, myself, I am Professor Sikinder, Head of the Department from Public Health. Okay, sir. Uh, I have one uh, experience and just I would like to have your comment on that. Yes, Five years sir. ago, I attended a conference in London. Okay. Uh, a team of the Israel, Israel came there, they presented about this uh, nanotechnology. Okay, sir. And they are telling that in the surgical instruments, for the surgical mm -hmm. instruments, gowns, gloves, and caps all will be sterilized instead okay. of autoclave or other, okay. uh, uh, other systems. Okay. Simply you can spray the uh, nanoparticles of silver iodide so okay. that there will be there will be no need of uh, sterilization that uh, it oh. can be that, it, that itself can be useful as a sterilization do you have oh. any idea do you have any comment on this yes sir because you know uh, when uh, nanotechnology uh, was uh, you know even uh, when these we when we our own team started to work we were also looking for many such nanoparticles silver nanoparticles and as well 
so silver nanoparticles have a unique property of killing the microbes they and they are very effective in killing the microbes so it is like you know that is why people are behind nanomaterials especially silver gold and copper like that so the problem as i told you earlier uh, they have the antimicrobial effect very much but again there is a small issue of toxicity that is like silver nanoparticles when you know when you check uh, any uh, material available in the market which are used for wound healing for antimicrobial whatever it is the concentrations which is mentioned on the label is not the same it, it always when you check the concentration it exceeds what it has been uh, mentioned uh, uh, that is outside so it is like such uh, high concentrated uh, silver uh, nanomaterials either it is in bulk form or uh, in nano form they are uh, highly harmful to the tissues so once you are it is in contact with your system see you are using it in gloves and you are using it for some other purpose it's it, it is not uh, uh, highly harmful but when it is in contact with your human body or with your human tissue it is highly harmful that is why i told you uh, right from before uh, around 8 uh, uh, to 9 years we are looking for or even now you know the toxicity concern is high and everybody is behind uh, uh, non toxic or bio compatible materials everybody is uh, having a concern to avoid such uh, harmful materials and they are behind the such met that is why we are looking for more organic more greener materials and uh, natural uh, based uh, nano materials so in that case um, every scientist now would say uh, better go for uh, uh, nano materials which are non toxic so that is the advice for that you know i told you because for energy applications for for any semiconductor application whatever it is nobody is concerned about the toxicity there are pollution concerns but when as a biomedical scientist or as a biologist we are more concerned about toxicity that is why we always are going for uh, non toxic that is why as i told you carbon when you compare silver and carbon you know carbon is less toxic so we look for same amount of uh, activity but with lesser toxicity that is why as you told uh, surgical materials gloves you know uh, they they can be sterilized and after sterilization if they are coated with the silver they are going to be perfectly effective they are going to kill all the microbes which are available it is there but when you are concerning about how exactly they are coming into contact with your tissues or organs then you are concerned about the toxic if they are killing the microbes it's good as well that is why you are looking for alternate materials and we are still exploring more and more not only carbon quantum dots okay now what next again better materials than because carbon quantum dots are not 100% perfect any any material can't be 100% efficient so we are looking for more and more uh, such kind of materials anything else uh, yeah, thank you from so, thank you very much uh, actually oh. it was a nice explanation uh, but sorry and, there uh, were so many network issues and we couldn't have a proper uh, flow it was like a big for that purpose, i would like to, to share the slides because we missed some of the slides and uh, sure 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 you can have i i'll just send it through lalu sir you can have okay, okay. we will <laughs> we will have uh, thoroughly it okay. so thank you very much for your nice uh, uh, presentation ma'am we uh, any others can only yeah our other colleagues uh, they wanted to ask something please please sir. please are come here good afternoon good afternoon sir yeah, so, so my name is gadwich okay. which both from dambal university okay. working as the bidin college of engineering and technology fine sir. so before i begin my sincere chertang i will ask the question to other audience who are here attending the program okay uh, as head of the department who can give an suggestion so let me give a little chance and on that so i will get my gratitude to our program okay is there any other so i would like to express my sincere thanks or the gratitude to Dr. Lalu for is organizing this program who is the department of the International Affairs from the University and I also express my my gratitude to Dr. Presesa 
the Department of the Nanotechnology for presenting this uh, program. It's very good webinar for us today. Seeing the program that we've been joining, that we join. I think again there is a network issue from there and we get a good uh, opportunity based on the MOU that time between your university and our get a, yeah we uh, are also looking for such things. And we wish a lot of for the next coming years based on our agreement, so we will share the many things for upcoming uh, years. Sure, sir, sure. So to make this, I would like to also to attend my gratitude to our wisdom, Dr. Uh, Dibai Tisha, who is an offering program that he made seen the event to your program. We signed the MOU, so that we focus from the beginning up to now on. And I also express my gratitude to our academic program, mm -hmm. the director, the dean, and the aide of the department who are here present. And I also express my gratitude to, to our program coordinator, uh, Mr. Jagan, the one who made all this uh, program to be fruitful. So this is all I want to say. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. And do not hesitate for anything Yes, us, we are with you to share everything and which also for the next coming to, to offer us the many scholarships from uh, the Gambella University because we have the different program we are in the Gambella University as uh, you are presenting the different, the webinar seen the beginning up to uh, this ending of the program. And as we say, it is the sixth webinar program for seeing design the MOU. And this is the what I would like to say for this program. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, okay. Thank you, sir. My mail ID and phone number is also available with the uh, officials and in the website. So any doubts or further clarifications regarding this particular topic, you are feel uh, please feel free to contact me at uh, any point or any queries can be addressed to my email as well. I'm happy to answer those. And we are also looking forward for many such collaborative activities with your university. Thank you very much for the opportunity given uh, both the Gambala University and uh, Norul Islam, especially Dr. Uh, Lalu Gladson, sir. So uh, we are expecting more of such uh, uh, collaborative activities. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. OK. Thank you, madam. Uh, thank you for your wonderful lecture. And I have posted the feedback link in the chat box. Go through it and uh, send your feedback. As well as uh, I have uh, posted the email address of the presenter, nanohod at uh, niuni.com. If you have any queries, please uh, write to her and uh, you can collaborate with her. And thank you, everyone, for attending this uh, international lecture series one. Uh, thank you, Jagan, sir. And the convey our regards to uh, your Gambala University President, Dr. Dilibo. Okay, sure, sir. Now, now our, pre our uh, public health uh, department here to give the water thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. So, Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, series of presentations. I would like to thank all the presenters, all uh, six on uh, different six topics. Thank you very much uh, to all the presenters. And I would like to extend my thanks to Dr. Tesco Thomas, Vice Chancellor of Nikkei University, and of course, Dr. Lalu Chandra, International Affairs Director, Nikkei University. And also, uh, I would like to extend my gratitude and, of course, my thanks to all the other departments, directors, uh, deans of the 
university and particularly the jagan raj who is coordinating all the activities and also mr gatwich uh, dean of the uh, engineering and other i would like to extend my gratitude and thanks to all of our they were sincerely participating in all the presentations and uh, my students all of the uh, from concerned departments and uh, our pro Mr. Mahmud was coordinating all these issues. Uh, uh, I would I would like to thank him especially again. And uh, moreover, uh, I we would like to thank to our president as well, uh, Dr. Derava, for uh, having a uh, beautiful MOU between your university and Gambela University. Finally, I thank on, uh, all each and one. Thank you, and we will have such uh, collaborations in future. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your wonderful speech. Thanks. Sir. Shall we wind up, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you.